Harley, how are you? Thanks for taking the time. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. What's up, Connor? Um, so you're getting back to your acting roots a bit. Uh, <laughs> new Mountain Dew commercial. Um, so I'm curious, were you worried that you lost a step uh, uh, between your early days plugging shoe companies and, and pain medication? Um, so what was it like getting back to that? You know, I've been fortunate enough uh, to get to do a few commercials along the way. I think I, you know, I, I did some a little a little while ago for Directv, and then uh, I did uh, some Super Bowl spots for the Tide. But you know, I thought these were just really funny, and uh, if I think something's funny, then I think I can do it. So I, I <laughs> you know, I, I enjoy being back at it. And uh, to touch on that, uh, I'm curious. I mean, I know that you had an interesting journey to, to where you got I mean you played baseball and then you sort of stumbled into theater um when did you know that you were like funny or that you were someone that could a knew what funny was b were funny and c could actually like make this into a sort of viable career <laughs> uh well it took a long time for me to know I could make it into a career but uh I always knew I could do funny funny was a survival mechanism you know I was uh I was like two feet tall and covered in freckles. Um, <laughs> I, I knew I wasn't going to wow anyone with a, with a, you know, might or intimidation, but I, I don't know. I, I also always had really funny friends. I just, I, I sort of felt like everyone I knew was funny. All my friends were funny. My family members were funny. Funny was just uh, how you approach the world. So the fact that I was able to turn it into a living, well, that was, you know, that was a little bit of uh, effort and luck, but I guess I didn't realize I could do it. I think until Sunny was the hit. Okay. Um, and then to touch on one of the spots. Um, so you again, get to showcase your musical talents um, on the, on the keyboard. Was that, was that from of your own creation? I know you have a pretty impressive. Crowd. Yeah, actually they reached out to me and they said, uh, you know, would you be interested in doing a song? I said, yeah, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> And they pitched me some some things, you know, just to make sure that because I, I think if I were to write the song, there's always the possibility that I'm like knocking off some Beatles song and don't realize I'm, doing, <laughs> I'm doing it. so, you know, they they cleared they cleared a few uh, chord progressions for me and then and then cut me loose. Oh, perfect. Okay, good to hear. Um, and actually, to touch on what you said uh, a second ago, um, I was listening to the podcast a few weeks ago, and you sort of mentioned that um, New England sense of humor where the best people and the, the, the people that you're best friends with, you give the hardest time. Um, and I'm from, um, I'm a Rhode Island native myself. Um, and that really you are, What part of Rhode Island from? Born in North, born in North Kingston, uh, lived in Westerly. Um, and yeah, my parents are still up there actually in uh, Mystic right over the border. But, oh, amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was my, my proving ground. So I, I was just curious if you could elaborate on that a little more, like, why do you think that is? I mean, you also said that like all your friends and family, they were funny. I mean, it's the same thing for me is I, I, my family lived in Pawtucket and it was just like, all oh, my uncles were just hilarious dudes. Is there something about the region you think just spawns that <laughs> almost survival mode as you mentioned? <laughs> well, you know, before New England was the sports dynasty that it became, <laughs> you know, uh, in my childhood, we were used to being number two a lot, you know? Uh, I, I grew up watching the Red Sox in the nineties, man. I, I yeah, exactly. a lot of, of, the home runs, a lot of so. Red Sox heartbreak. <laughs> Uh, a lot of Patriots heartbreak. Uh, the Celtics were good, but but you know and the Bruins. But uh, so I think I think that combined with like, look, what they just get like twenty three inches of snow in Rhode Island. You got to keep yeah. your sense of humor. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't really know what it is, but I'm still friends with so many people from Rhode Island, and um, you know, even one of our our longtime editors on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia was a kid from my town who was out in California and he was cutting together like reality shows like Deadliest Catch and he was looking for a scripted job and we lost one of our editors and I, I said well I know this guy's funny I wonder if he'd be willing to do it and you know since then he's gone on to win an Emmy not for our show but uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know now he's doing like Marvel TV shows and stuff and I don't know and there's just that New England sense of humor uh I guess you got to have a little edge. I don't know. That's yeah. how you survive. Um, and then this, I also saw you have a new movie coming out with Jenny Slade as well. Um, and it seems like you sort of gravitate characters who find themselves engaged in wacky situations after their life spiraled out of control. Uh, is there any traumatic personal experience you're drawing from there? Or is it just sort of a, <laughs> a natural thing? No, that 
very, I've been very fortunate to play out most of my drama on screen and uh, have been able to avoid too much of it off screen. Uh, thank goodness. But um, no, I think uh, whatever, for whatever reason, people seem to get a kick out of seeing me in a uh, situation that is uh, highly stressful. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and then to touch back on the Rhode Island thing, uh, I do want to ask you this question. If you had to pick a last meal, but it could only be limited to Rhode Island culinary staples, what would you, what would that look like? I know I'm putting you on the spot here a little bit. Oh man. And okay. Well, I guess I got to go down to Flo's Clam Shack and have a couple of uh, oh, okay, The stuff he's good. Yeah, good. <laughs> you know, with the rubber band and everything. Uh, uh, yeah. Something like that, you know, what else is great you know uh, with calamari you got your neuric systems you got yeah i might want to have an awful awful or a dell's lemonade you know? oh man you're speaking my language beautiful yeah. <laughs> oh and an ice cold mountain dew <laughs> exactly raspberry i was gonna say raspberry lemonade there's no and bad raspberry pie. spark mountain dew yeah <laughs> Um, and I obviously, I can't talk to you, uh, without asking. There's one show that people obviously know you for is Reno 911. Uh, <laughs> so I, would like, I would like to touch on the piggyback off the, the culinary, uh, questions. I know Charlie, he has some very interesting taste in food. Hmm. Um, I'm curious, have you ever been subjected to, or had the chance to actually try any of his unconventional, um, uh, items. I know that the grilled Charlie you may have had a bite of. I'm not sure if the the prop department I've had actually a bite of a grilled of Charlie. Uh, I, I believe I have not had milk steak, although I have had some raw jelly beans. Um, but uh, you know, I I had rum ham once. You did. Uh, okay. I was uh, I was filming in where was I? I think it was in North Carolina, and I went out with the cast and we went out to eat. And the bartender sent me over a tall glass of rum with five slices of ham in it. <laughs> <laughs> how can i ask how that tasted actually not bad that's not of all the concoctions that we had in uh sunny that one's the most passable 